For the carving of uh, the mandibular second premolar, okay, um, we are not going to find much differences between the first and the second mandibular premolars, just the, the step of the occlusal outline. Okay, so the, my first step will be the same. I'm going to take my crown lens, eight millimeter, right? Mark my cervical line, take the slopes, mesially and distally, distally will be longer here at three millimeters, mesially at two millimeters, the same. First step, cut. Okay, then go for the step two. Step two, I make my midline. Then I take my height of contour at the buccal side. Here, two millimeters, the cervical force, زي ما احنا عارفين. وفي the lingual side, هيبقى in the middle of the crown at four millimeter. And I will measure from here two millimeters buccally. I will measure from here upward four millimeter. Mark the level of the height of contour. The same will be done in the other side. One will be in the, the buccal side here. I have uh, two millimeters and the lingual side I have four millimeters. Then take your measurements. It will be here. I have my uh, 3.5 and 3.5, four and four, and go up again at the top of the wax in the same way we did in the first. In the buccal side, take from here, from the midline, 1.5 millimeter. And from the lingual side, take 3.5. Why? To make my lingual inclination. So the crown should be lingually inclined. So again, make the buccal cusp more near to the midline. 1.5 buccally, 3.5 lingually. Join these points straight as you see. Neglect the presence of this slope, right? Go like this, one straight line as I teached you before. One straight line from the cusp tip to the height of contour, and the other level should be below the line of the height of contour. Okay, the same here, which will be showing this point to the middle of the crown, and from the cusp do the other line, both sides here and here. Then we're going to cut. As usually, again, because I draw here straight, so go straight from the head here, go from up downward like this. Take the lines straight from here and here. This is my next step. First step, no difference. Second step also. No difference, but I want to show you again because some of you will still have some doubts. Take it straight like this, one level, and from the height of contour, take the other level. So if you draw good drawing and follow these drawing in the cutting, you will also have a good outcome in the crown card. This is my lingual side. Okay, so my height of contour will be in the middle of the crown, as you see. Corresponding to the line, I draw, I cut my height of contour. For the back side, I will cut in the same way. Start from upward and go down. Take care, look at this line, don't pass it, okay? Make a flat surface. Most of you leave here in the middle of the tooth, excess wax for the buccal ridge. No, this is not the step for the elevations. Just cut it straight. Till what? Till the cervical force, my height of contour here in the buccal. I reach like this, all the surface is flat. You see, following my line I have drawn, okay? Go for the other plane. plane this plane comes from the cervical 
Fold downwards to the neck like this. Okay, so when I reach this, I should find here again my buccal cusp is near to the midline than the lingual. I have height of contour buccally and lingually. Okay. Maybe if I have some excess, I can remove my problem. As I told you, when I see the line, I can leave half millimeter excess, just half millimeter for the finishing. And the person don't need much wax, so as not to be so big. Okay? Okay. This is step two. I reached step two in the same way. I did before. Type. The next step was what? Was the buckle ridge. The buckle ridge in the buckle side. I come here, make 1.5 millimeter on the slope line, go upward, the, on the cast step downward to the height of contour. The same here, 1.5 on the slope. Go upward and go downward for the height of contour. Then cut this triangle, as you know. I'm repeating just to get sure like this. I'm removing the periphery, this triangular area, till the height of contour. Okay? Don't make it concave and yeah, don't overcut. Take from upward, downward in such a way and remove. the wax here, leaving the middle part elevated. Then make roundation, general roundation for the buckle surface like this. This is the buckle ridge. I finished my buckle ridge. What about my lingual side? I used to do what in the next step to do? Lingual convergence. Now I don't have lingual convergence. What I'm going to do? I'm going to make exactly my uh, lingual cusps. Okay, how can I do them here? Remove this old midline. Okay. Draw a new central groove in the middle. This will be my central, new central groove. Okay. In the middle of the occlusal surface I have. <coughs> I remove this one, the old midline, and make new central groove dividing the occlusal into two half. Then make here your marginal ridges as usual, right? Then I am going to make my V shape separation, right? Here, how can I do it from the buckle cusp? Go down till my central groove as usual, make V shape notch like this to separate the buckle cusp you see i stop where in the midline okay shadow separation like this then after that i use previously i used to make the same here to separate my buckle and lingual now i want to remove this lingual tip why because my lingual cusps are shorter than the buckle so after i make this my v shape like this just go straight. You see here, after you make this, go straight like this. Yeah, and a sloping area from the buckle to the central groove. It is sloping, right? And from here, from the central groove, lingually take straight line like this. Why? To shorten the lingual cusp. This is the difference I have. So after my buckle cusp, I make my buckle ridge, I didn't do my lingual convergency. I want just to shorten my lingual cusp. My lingual cusp to be shortened, it is not so much short, just one millimeter as you see. Okay, how can I do it? After I come here from the cusp, as I used to do my V-shape notch here, the buckle side, go for the central groove. From the central groove, go straight. To make the lingual cusp flat like this. Okay. After that, 
I will do what? Here, this is my mesial side. And this is my distal side. So I will divide the lingual aspect in two. Two thirds toward the mesial, one third toward the distal. Here, it look like this. If they are one, two, three, three thirds, two thirds will go here for my mesiolingual cusp. And here, one third for the distolingual cusp. Mark this part. Hmm? Go to the line here, which is the lingual groove, to the central groove inside, and out the lingual side also. Go with this groove to make my lingual <coughs> groove separating the two lingual cusps. Okay, so now I have one big buccal cusp. And these two lingual cusps. Yep. After I make shortening of the cusps in this way, I divide two thirds for the mesiolingual, one third for the distolingual, and I have this my shape. <clears throat> what I'm going to do that I'm going to carve the three cusps in the way we do. What I, what is the way I have triangular edge here? On this triangle ridge, I have two slopes here, mesial and distal slope, the same, okay? 